making tax digital. So, this is the government. This is the government statement on the website um, on HMRC saying making tax digital part of their plans to get to help people get their tax right. I think it's quite good. But keeping you on top of your affairs. Just take those sort of things into consideration. HMRC's ambition, one of the most digitally advanced tax administrations in the world. I did a bit of research on that as well. We're sort of hanging behind Estonia at the moment. How's that feel? But um, no, there are some, um, there's some very advanced um, tax administrations in the world actually, um, in places that you don't expect. We are trying to um, catch up. Well, say we, we're sort of getting in the way as accountants at the moment. And so HMRC would like to get us out of the way. What they want to do is to make it so-called more effective, keep going, <coughs> more efficient, and easier for taxpayers to get their tax right. What does that sound to you, like to you, from the taxpayer's point of view? They want more money, don't they? They want more money. And they want it quicker. The thing is, the government's had quite a lot of success um, in getting, being more effective, more efficient, and getting their tax right. If you think of what you've gone through in the last few years as businesses and organisations, what about, um, well, if we start off with self-assessment, there's quite a lot of, lot of information about that. And then everybody had to tell the government how much tax to pay, and then, then they would investigate it if they didn't like that. With corporates, large corporates, if you pay, if you um, manage to make one and a half million in, in uh, profit, you have to pay your tax in instalments. Okay? It's the same with VAT, actually. Um, and of course, there was RTI. What a, what a great, what a great gain for the government there. In the history bef before before the RTI, that they could be 18 months, two years behind on knowing what PAYE you owed. Possibly, you could your company could go into administration owing them loads. But actually, what's happened with RTI is obviously the right on it with your PAYE national insurance. So this is the next step with VAT. There's some more to come in 2020. So expect to come to perhaps another event like this if you like it because there'll be more about income tax, possibly more about um, the corporate tax regime as well. But all that's happening, they're trying to get it more effective, more efficient, get their tax right, earn some more. So, we're here to talk about VAT. Now, I'm no VAT expert, I, I can honestly say that, because VAT is a ridiculously um, uh, in-depth subject. However, what we do know is that Generally speaking, annual VAT receipts have been rising. So you are now up to, what is that, over 120, nearly 125 billion uh, VAT receipts. So making tax digital. This is law, okay? So it's not something, well, unless, unless, <laughs> unless you are a villain, of course. Um, but um, it is actually law. It's came into effect 1st of April 2019. It's coming into effect. So who is affected? So basically, it's all entities with, um, that uh, have achieved 85,000 um, turnover. That's all types of income. And basically, it encompasses all those organisations and there are very, very few exceptions. Okay? Very, very few exceptions. However, the main exceptions are being if you've got uh, a group re VAT registration, um, if you pay VAT in instalments, uh, well, it's m monthly, um, if you are a charity um, that isn't a company, um, so that doesn't, ex that, that excludes, obviously, there are subsidiaries of charities that are VAT registered. I have to say that because we are, are, um, we are experts in VAT uh, for charities, and charities are our big thing. So um, if you want to talk about charities and you're in the room, then um, actually Jen's here as well, as our head of charities here, talk today as well. 
So that if you are in one of those other groups, so if you're a trust or a or under, uh, yeah, or, or not not liable for this 85,000 um, VAT registration, then you can have a six. There is a six-month deferral. So that's through to October, but you will have been told that. Okay, so HMRC will have sent you a letter. Exemptions can be applied for, but as I say, it's sort of getting a bit late now. And so I think if you if you were trying to get the deferral, I think you would struggle. Okay. So how how many organisations are we talking about here? So. It's particularly this one, I haven't got my pointer, but 32% of, of um, traders are actually up to the threshold. It's 85,000, okay, which is actually 750,000 businesses. But if you say that's 30%, we, we know, now know that there's 1.5 million. Uh, now, what's quite interesting that need to do this, and obviously we've got a room full of people here, um, if you actually go on to HMRC's um, little video which we've embedded in our presentation. I'm not necessarily going to play it depending on time, but there's been about 15,000 views. So I think it's a subject that's sort of gone below the radar. Has anybody seen the adverts for MTD on the television? Has anybody seen Peter Jones? Right, so Peter Jones is the closest advert you've got on TV for MTD. But he's not talking about making tax dig digital. He's talking about the methodology of how MTD has to work, and it is promoting, obviously, a software that does it. Okay? But he's not, there's nobody actually sort of talking about this. What's going on? Do you? Do you think? I think it's quite, you know, we had the big monster, didn't we, for the old uh, pensions. You know? And we had the little man with his hat for self-assessment. If you go, you know, depending on how old you are. <laughs> but, but there's, you know... There's not been a lot of information about this. So now we go on to what is expected. So what, it, what are you expected to do? So you are expected to maintain your accounting records digitally. Maintaining records on a piece of paper won't be allowed anymore. You can't do it. Okay, so that's, that's, going, that's, that's going. And actually, just filling in nine numbers, so I think there is nine numbers on a VAT return, that actually work, is no good either. They actually want to see all the transactions behind those nine numbers. Okay? So what do you think they're going to do with that? Anybody thought? How much information do you think that's going to be? Do you think that? So, so the, at the moment they're getting nine numbers, and now they're going to get every entry in your book. That's scary, isn't it? That's almost as scary as that video. The point being, they're going to have to use, they must be using some kind of artificial intelligence. They're, they're using some kind of machine learning software. They're going to use some tools, and what do you think that's going to try and do? <laughs> so actually, what they don't want, actually, what they're trying not to do, is to have anybody interfere with that. So, accountants, they don't want really, I mean... We do lots of things to try and help you get by in your business life. So we, we try our best to so keep you out of jail and then also try and help you to take advantage of things. There was, um, there was a little man in his bowler hat who went, who went around and uh, got some information about business in this country and said, well, what happens if we just look at the, what's in your books and take out all those things, the adjustments that the accountants make, get everything out of the way. So don't have these capital allowance things, but don't have this depreciation stuff either. Let's not have these accruals and prepayments that accountants talk about. Let's get rid of all that, and let's just tax your num the numbers that are in the books. What do you think the result of that was for the HMRC? Yeah. It was virtually the same. They, they reckon they would get the same amount of tax out of business if they taxed what was in your books to what if accountants did it. So, it's quite, so I think this is what's happened in terms of they saying, well, actually, we won't lose anything if we just take people's records and we'll just, we'll just take what's in there. So what's then going to happen? The people who haven't got much advice or haven't had much input, 
into their figures. They're probably just going to, they're going to suck the most tax up, I guess, and it will be the ones who have had some kind of input or know what they're doing will save a lot. Maybe. I'm just crystal balling that because um, there isn't a lot to say how the HMRC are going to use this information. All we got to guess is that they're going to try and get the tax quicker and, and more accurate and, and, and more of it. So anyway, so we're looking at all your transactions. There's got to be some kind of linkage between what you do on a daily basis and what goes to HMRC. So what will you need to do? So you need to submit your VAT returns using a functional, compatible software product that interfaces with an HMRC. Okay, so nothing here, so just go thump. Your records, thump, into HMRC. Okay? So it just connects. You won't be able to just go into your account and just put in your nine numbers. Okay? Fill in a VAT return in a normal way. So this, this is sort of, this is the, the way they're talking about. So it's digital links. This is another one of their term, terms that they use. Digital links. So we're talking about all your, all your um, transactions in there into an accountancy software, straight out to HMRC. And if you use multiple softwares or multiple methods, there's got to be some kind of link. So it's, it's no good sort of having to do for a spreadsheet, for instance, it's no, you can use spreadsheets, no, I'm, not get, I'm not saying you can't, but you certainly can't cut and paste something, okay? It has to have a digital link, all right? So what might this make you do? <laughs> How does it make you feel at the moment? Yeah? Well, at the moment, the trend has been, the red line, which is the sort of lower one over there, you can't see it probably, is going up. So they're deregistrations. So we're up to 250,000 deregistrations, 2017-18. Obviously, it was back like that in 2008-9. I'm sort of thinking about what, the, um, what was happening to business in 2008-9. Do you remember that? Uh, so... That whether this will, this will be reflected as well, I, I'm not sure um, whether deregistrations will go up. I'm pretty sure they're on the up um, because, obviously, if you were thinking about closing a business or you had a business that you've had registered for some particular reason in the past but it doesn't need to be done now, it's sort of, there. I, I can see lots of tidying up going on, you think? Yeah that you will get that happen. You may get people passing on, well, I had a recent case talking about passing, they're talking about passing the business on to the next generation. And actually, I don't want to do this. And it's like, well, how can we, can we do that? Can we do that in time for this? And, and this is the sort of thing. I think it's going to trigger some different thoughts or some bring some thoughts forward. Okay, so if you have those sort of thoughts, get some help there. Right, so what action do you need to take? Uh, does, does everybody use a software in this room? You might not, but I don't, I'm not sure. Right, so basically what's happened is that, as you'd expect, a lot of the big players, we always talk about Peter Jones and Sage, and that, they put quite a lot behind it to get making tax digital. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors about software and what it can do and who's the best, and there's lots of talk about uh, how effective they've been already and how good they're going to be in the future. What we do know is HMRC have kept a list of all the softwares that, are, that will work or have sought approval to make it work. Okay, so you can go, and you can go onto this place there, this website, and you can look at a list of softwares that are compatible for making tax digital. Uh -huh. So... If you stick to mainstream, mainstream sort of software, most of it will work. Um, but get some help. This is the point. Get some help. Get to understand whether your software works and whether you have those digital links to that software. Don't forget the digital links. So what action do you know? Now you can initiate the sign up for Making Touch Digital. Um, 
or, or, or your agent can do it. Obviously, I put us there. And in that process, you will be signed up for, you know, for paperless communications as, as a part of it. That's, that's what happens. This is HMRC's presentation. How to sign up for making tax digital for VAT. To sign up for making tax digital for VAT, go to gov.uk and search for Use software to submit your VAT returns. From that page, you'll find a link to Sign up to use software to submit VAT returns and you'll select the green box to sign up. You can sign in using your government gateway user ID and password. This is the user ID and password you use to submit your VAT returns online. If you don't normally use your government gateway credentials to submit your VAT returns to HMRC, you will be asked for some additional information such as your VAT number, VAT registration date and business postcode. The next screens you see are regularly improved based on user feedback and may vary slightly when you use them. You'll then be asked, do you have more than one VAT registered business? If you have, you'll be asked a few more questions to make sure the business details and the VAT number match. I've selected no and continue. Select one of these options to say, what type of business are you registered as? I've selected Sole Trader and Continue. You must select Continue to move on through the process. You'll need to confirm your details. The information we ask for will depend on how you've set up your business. If you're a sole trader, you may be asked for your date of birth and national insurance number as part of the sign-up process. And if you're a limited company, your company registration and corporation tax unique taxpayer reference numbers. Agree to get emails instead of letters. You have to agree to go paperless and receive emails about your VAT to complete the sign up process. We'll send you emails when there are messages for you about VAT in your HMRC digital tax account. You'll need to provide your email address. We'll then send you an email so that you can reply and confirm your email address. We'll confirm that you've verified your email address. Select Continue to sign up. During the pilot period, you are then asked to read and accept the terms of participation. We'll then confirm that you're ready to take part. You'll need to make sure you are keeping your records digitally and have MTD compatible software so that you can submit VAT returns to HMRC. You'll find information about making tax digital for VAT on gov.uk and a Find Software Suppliers for Sending Income Tax Updates and VAT Returns page is also available. There are other videos available on this site to give you more information about getting ready for making tax digital. Thank you for watching. There you go. Um, <laughs> I've embedded that in our presentation, um, which you can, which you will be sent after this. Um, because it's so difficult to find. <laughs> it, I said about how much noise there is about you know, this whole subject. There is a lot of noise on the internet. Um, so you know, it is best to try and get through to HMRC site um, as in, you know, in the most direct, direct way possible. So you've seen some of the steps. It's, it is a four step process. You, you have to go through those processes to, to, to register. So basically, you've got to do this at the right time. There's, um, there is a window, if you like, between um, what you're doing at the moment and what you've got to do in the future. What we're recommending at the moment is that you go through to your, the last return you can do um, on, your, on your current system and then pick up MTD. So effectively, let me just, can, can you just, I'm going on. So, when do you have to submit your first MTD VAT return? So this is half D, okay? So, we're thinking, we've got a nice picture of the summer. So, think summer's not that far away, is it? I mean, we're talking about spring now, aren't we? Spring day, but it's not far away, actually. So, depending on your VAT return period, it'll be a 30th of June, one July, 
for August. So, for example, we've got an example here, the first MTD return, April, May, June, the quarter end June 2019. You have a last non-MTD return submission deadline of Tuesday the 7th of May, the 7th, you know, the one after, the month after the one, last one. Um, and then what you need to do is you've got a possible date of signing up, so then you sign up then. Now, if you, this is all if you pay by direct debit, because that's what's happening now. So if you clear, you need to leave clear 15 working days before the submission deadline. So really, the latest possible date for MTD for VAT is Tuesday the 16th of July. I didn't put that in red, but I'm hoping that's because you'll do it on time because you've been here. Okay. Right, so what happens if you don't comply? Um, at the moment, we, we like to think that the soft landing things apply. So, you know, this is something big. I haven't been particularly good at telling people about it. Um, what's going to happen? Well, they're saying there's a hard line, actually, that there is no excuses, that there is a default surcharge, that there are penalties. You have to make reasonable efforts to comply. The bit that they are talking about the soft landing is actually the digital links. They have been talking about that, and it does appear that there will be some kind of, for about a year, maybe some kind of um, uh, time lag in which they will insist on these digital links. But um, I think the point is, it's about getting your house in order now. Just, just get on with it. Just sort your software out and, and deal with it. Um, I can't give you any more advice, really. So, you know, if you use Ward Goodman, we're here to help. Um, if you use somebody else, then obviously uh, make sure that they give you the adequate support. 